How you doing guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George. I scale brands up to seven figures by using paid traffic and I also teach agencies on how to do the same. And in my previous videos, I went over my agency structure, which got quite a few questions. So I thought I'd address them in this video. And what I've noticed a lot in the industry is that we as marketers or as coaches of marketers, we have sort of evolved from the pay per hour model where you basically get paid let's say ten dollars an hour and then if you want to make let's say a thousand dollars then you need to work a hundred hours to get up to that thousand dollars then sort of the trends in the marketing industry is you should be getting paid by your value not by your time which is something that i definitely stand for but i think that we can also take this a step further so just let me explain that if you get paid for your value and not your time, usually it's still a fixed price. And the way this is positioned in the market is that that is actually a good thing. So the coaches or the gurus, they'll tell you like, don't get paid per hour, get paid a fixed price per month, regardless of how many hours you work, because it's not based on how many hours you work, it's based on the value that you provide. So they say their logic is, well, you get paid $1,000 a month because you're providing that client with a five extra tin. So you're making the client $5,000, they spend $1,000 on ads, um, and then $1,000 on your retainer, they've made money, you've made money, everybody wins, right? Well, that is correct to a certain extent. The only issue with that business model is that if you wanna scale up your agency further, it's it's basically still uh, requiring you to put in a lot of work or have a lot of clients. So if we look at, for example, the seven figure mark, so if you wanna make a million a year, you need to be making $83,000 a month. Now, if you are still going off that $1,000 a month retainer, that means you need to manage 83 clients and make sure that 83 clients stick with you for 12 months in order to hit seven figures. Now, let's say we increase the retainer because obviously that is the the, the guru's sort of next step, right? Oh, we'll just charge more. Well, then you st let's say you charge 2,000 a month, then you still need you know over 40 clients in order to hit that seven figure mark. Now, just ask yourself, do you really be, do you really want to have 40 clients? Obviously, you know, it sounds good, right? 40 clients, but do you really wanna be managing 40 clients? The basically the solution in terms of having 40 clients at that point is to get freelancers to do the work for you, right? Be the CEO, be the owner of the business, work on the business, not in the business. We've all heard that one, right? Well, that is all, you know, it's all fun and well, but if you're getting freelancers to do the work for you, which, you know, again, I'm not saying I'm against, but if you're doing so, that is going to cut into your profit margins and it's also going to have diminishing returns in terms of the fulfillment. So someone from, let's say, a third world country that is doing the work uh, you're supposed to be doing for a fraction of the price will always have uh, less of a service delivery than you could have had in the first place. So we've already established that the fixed retainer is a bit outdated. The freelancer method where we outsource for cheap and cheerful is also a bit outdated. So what should we do? Well, it's actually a combination of a few things. First of all, yes, I do think we need to be charging more. But second of all, I also think we should be looking at performance deals. So rather than just charging your upfront retainer of $1,000, charge them a thousand dollars plus a percentage of revenue or a percentage of ad spend then you can also give them a ROAS guarantee so ROAS is mainly used in the e-commerce space where you know you have the profit margin of a particular product or an average product mar profit margin of the store let's say that is 30 percent which means that they need a return on ad spend of 3.3 to break even Anything above 3.3 is profit. Anything below 3.3 is obviously you know, a loss. So it's costing them more in ad spend than it is to you know, basically make a profit on the product. So just to break that down to simple maths, we have a product that it costs $100. The profit margin is 30%, which means that it costs them on average $70 to make the product. And then they have a margin of $30 that is profit. So when they sell a product for $100, $70 goes to, you know, cost of goods delivered and then um, the $30 is obviously profit technically speaking we can spend up to $30 in ads and still be profitable obviously you know when you spend $30 and the cost per page is 30 then they've broken even but technically speaking we can spend up to 30 
and still be profitable. So let's say we get them a CPA of 10. They've still got that $20 margin. So once you understand that, you can also work out what their cost per acquisition has to be in order for them to be profitable. So if we get them, let's say, a return on ad spend of five and their break-even return on ad spend is three, they've made a profit. You can set that as a guarantee for the back end. So you can tell the client, listen, we charge an upfront retainer of $1,000 then we also charge a percentage of revenue on the back end, provided we hit a profitable ROAS. So if you do not hit the profitable ROAS, obviously you do not get paid. If you do hit the profitable ROAS, you do get paid. And let's say you have a client that is doing 50,000 a month in revenue through Facebook. Their profit margin is 50%, which means that anything with a ROAS above two is profitable. You've gotten them a ROAS of three and you charge 10% of the back end, so 10% of page conversion value. That means that that client that you were only going to charge a thousand dollar retainer for is now you know, basically a $6,000 client because you've also got 10% of the back end, 10% of 50% is 5,000. So now, rather than having, you know, needing to have, let's say 80 clients to get up to seven figures, if your client is, you know, 6,000 a month or let's say, you know, 10,000 a month, then you only need between, let's say, six and 10 clients to hit that, you know, seven figure mark. Now you need to ask yourself, would you rather have 83 clients or would you rather have 10 clients where you get a percentage of the back end? And the great thing is once you have less clients that are all higher ticket or where you get back end deals, you can focus more on those clients. And because you only have 10 clients, you don't necessarily need to outsource it for, you know, cheap and cheerful because it's, you know, basically it's not that much work to maintain 10 clients. And because you're all in on those 10 clients, you can also get them better results. And that is how we've also structured our agency. I do the media buying and, you know, basically by doing so, I don't outsource it. So I'm still up to date with all of the Facebook ads trends, all of the digital marketing trends. And we're also getting better results for our clients. And I'm making more money as well because I've got 100% of the profits and I've also got a percentage of the back end. Now, if you want to make this even more juicy, you can actually take this a step further again. You can charge a onboarding fee. And yes, you know, a lot of the coaches and the gurus and everyone has said, don't charge onboarding fees because that is what the established agencies do, right? Like the, the old school brick and mortar agencies. And we're like this, the new kids on the block that don't charge uh, onboarding fees and not on like that. But what I would actually suggest is actually do the onboarding fee, but also give them extra value in advance. So what we like to do is as part of the onboarding fee, we obviously onboard the client, but we also go through their website, which is in this case Shopify, because we only take on Shopify clients. We look at their website and we give them something called CRO, which stands for conversion rate optimization. So all of the best practices, all the things that we've learned from our other clients, we will then apply to their store because if their store conversion rate goes up, then they're already making more money without spending an extra penny on ads. So let's say their conversion rate is 1% and they're spending 10,000 a month on ads and we apply changes to this site and get them a conversion rate of 2% and they're still spending the $10,000 on ads, they've already doubled the amount of sales because they're getting double the amount of conversions, twice as many purchases, twice as many customers. So without spending a single penny on ads, they've already doubled the amount of sales. Now, why should we do that? Well, first of all, like I said, it's extra money for us because we can charge an onboarding fee. But second of all, it will also make the media buying easy because if your store has a conversion rate of, let's say 5%, it's gonna be much, much easier to get the client's profitable sales as it is if the client has a store conversion rate of 0.5%, for example. Because you need to think of it like this, 1% conversion rate means that 99% of the people that are on the store do not end up placing an order. If they have a 5 percent conversion rate that means that 95 percent of the people that are on the store do not place an order but that does mean that five people out of 100 do and getting five people out of 100 to place an order is obviously going to be much easier uh, to run the ads for than it is if it's a one percent conversion rate hope that makes sense so on the front end we charge them an onboarding fee we sort their store conversion rate out make sure that their store conversion rate is healthy and that makes it you know, easier to run the ads in the long run. Then we charge a retainer, which is monthly recurring, and that just covers the cost of us, you know, basically running the ads and the value that we provide, quote unquote. And then we also charge a percentage of the back end, and that is obviously where it gets juicy because that is where we can charge much more and that is where we can basically make more money per client whilst also getting them great results. And the great thing about this is the clients will not fight you on this because it's a percentage of what they've made. So the clients will always make 
pounds more, but you're just getting a larger chunk of the pie because you were the one that baked the pie in the first place, right? You were the one that got the results. So it's only fair that you should get a percentage of that. Now for the more corporate clients, so the seven and eight figure clients or clients with investors involved or a board of directors, a percentage of page and conversion value will be quite difficult to get across the line. So what I then recommend is a percentage of ad spend. There's no ambiguity with the ad spend because obviously, you know, with page conversion value, they can fight it. They can say, oh, they came through a different uh, platform with a different attribution model and um, they can say that you know it was a retaining customer or you know it came through a different part of the the business you know maybe it came through the emails etc with the ad spend it's much easier because it's black and white you know there's, there's no loss of data with ad spend so you can just say okay well the return on ad spend was three you know we agreed that the return on ad spend break even point was two therefore we charge 10% of ad spend. Let's say you spent $100,000 on ads, 10% of 100,000 is 10,000. So then you build them an additional 10,000. So the way we do it is we charge them upfront, which is obviously recurring. And then at the end of the month, we'll look at their data and then we'll manually build them the back end deal. That is how we structure it. And that makes it much more manageable to run an agency. And it's much easier that way to get up to seven figures. Now, if you find this interesting, or if you want to know more on how we structure things, there's a video below this video. It's pinned in the first comments of this video, and that will walk you through exactly how we do it with Consult X. So Consult X is my pay program where we show you exactly how you can set up those backend deals, how you can charge more pay clients, attract bigger clients, and then make more money with fewer clients than what all of these gurus are telling you to do where you, you know, you've got appointment setters that are booking 12 calls a day, you've got 40 clients and stuff like that. Okay, so we're moving away from all that, uh, you know, all, all the mess and the chaos. And we're just going for a simple structure where we charge you a percentage of the back end, we show you how to get the results as well, which is obviously most important, and how you can get results and make more money per client than you would do previously. And we also have a guarantee, which is if you don't help you get an additional 10,000 a month recurring with your agency within the the first 90 days then you get 100 refunds you know basically a money back guarantee and that is how confident we are in this new method of running an agency so if you want to know more about that feel free to check out that first video in the comments you know section below if you enjoyed this video please leave it with a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you all in the next video